Hi guys, so today we're going to have a look at the difference between editing with Snapseed on our phone and using our PC or Mac or laptop to have a go at GIMP. Let's jump in. GIMP.org, I'll drop the link down below and then you need to click on the download. Make sure that you're downloading the correct software for your PC or Mac and then after that you will be taken to the download page. It should start automatically and how long it takes will obviously depend on your internet. Once it's downloaded hit the install button and then that should install it on your PC or Mac. We're going to drag the photo directly from the file into GIMP and then that will open up. And the first thing that I like to do is to make sure that it is completely even. So you can see I've just pulled a guide down here and now I'm going to go up to the rotate panel here and just click on the arrows so that I can manipulate the image to make sure that that back line there is completely even in line with the guideline. Once that's done, just press apply and that will just rotate your image. The next step is to go along with more guides and just crop out your image so it's completely um, blocked out with the guides. This will just make it a bit easier when it comes to cropping later on so that you know that your image is completely in the middle. The next step that I like to do is to adjust the white balance. So if you go up to colors and then go down to levels. So it's always worth trying the auto input. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Here, that's not looking great. So I'm going to go back to reset and then that will obviously put it back to how it was before. And then you can use these little color pickers here. You've got a black, a gray and a white. I like to use the white and then just go along on the image and just trying to find a nice white space to help the image software know that this is what should be classed as pure white and then it will just adjust the rest of the colors accordingly. So it is a big bit of trial and error but eventually I am happy and once I've got there it's time to move on to the next step. The next thing I will tweak is the curves. So go back up to color again and hit the curves button and then I have mine preset to the S shape and you can just see I'm tweaking it ever so slightly. You need to make sure that you um, keep the S shape itself because if you just brighten it, it's going to become overexposed. So the next step is obviously to press OK and that will apply it. So now I am going to have a look at the color balance and you can see you've got the um, profiles here. You can just tweak these sliders in the middle to kind of shift the color to be more cyan or red or magenta or you know the rest of them that are on there so this is just a good thing to have a little play around with at the moment the image is looking a little bit too blue there's a definite blue tinge to it so I'm just having a little play to kind of even that out and make it a little bit more balanced once I've done that I'm going to crop the image itself so I'm going to use the crop tool to go along and make sure that it is set to a one-to-one -one basis this will mean that it's a nice square shape it just makes it a lot easier when I'm uploading between the different platforms if everything's square and it means I get a nice thumbnail on my website so using the guides that we put in at the beginning you can see I'm just going around here now just making sure that everything is even. You can use the guides to make sure that your image, the product that you're actually wanting to be the focus of the image is completely in the middle. So once I've had a play around with that, you can set the image to crop. So once that's cropped, I'm just gonna make sure that the image itself um, is cropped to that size. So you can see me going in with the cropping tool. And then once that's done, I'm just going to crop to selection. So now that the image is finished, the last thing that I usually do is I scale the image and I use 3500 pixels. This is just a good size. It makes sure that um, it's not too big for uploading so it doesn't slow down my website. Lastly, I'm going to export. So you just go along and I like to export my files and keep the original. So this will just be called edit one and then export. And then lastly, I just turn down the quality to 98% it just compresses the file slightly but you don't get any loss of resolution. I'm going to go through it all one last time with you so I'm going to import the more close-up image so again we're going to start with me making sure that the back 
background board is completely level so I'm just rotating it slightly using the guide and once I've applied that I'm going to bring the guides down again but just surround the actual focus of the image in this case the rabbit ear bag so that when I crop it later I know that everything is completely in the middle. So to pull the guides, you literally just go up to the ruler at the top, hold down your left button and pull, and they should come out quite easily. So next we're going to go to levels. So I'm adjusting the white balance again. The auto white balance was definitely a bit better on this image, but it's still not perfect. So I'm resetting that and going back in again with the manual white color dropper, and then just having a little play around till I am happy with the balance of colors. Next in I'm going to go to curves again and just make the image ever so slightly brighter. You don't want to whiten it or brighten it too much because then it will end up oversaturated. And you can see these two points on the S curve here. So you bring the one at the top up and the one at the bottom down and that should just keep everything a bit more balanced. So again, I'm going in and just going with the color balance just to try and make sure that it's all nice and even. And again, there's a little bit of a blue cast. It's just because the camera is picking up on the blue gray of the bag and it's obviously offsetting everything else based on that as that is the main focus of the picture. So it just needs a little bit of manual tweaking just to make sure everything is okay. Once I've done that, I'm going to go in and I'm going to crop the image. So using the guides like we did before, I'm just going round now and making sure that it's all in the middle and I've got rid of all of the background that I don't want until I'm happy with the size. Once I'm at the size, then I go up to image crop to selection and try that again, image crop to selection, and there we go, it just gets rid of the background. So I'm gonna go down to scale again, and like I said, 3500 is my preferred size, so scaling that. And then lastly, I am going to go to export it. This will go down as edit two, because it's the close up. So I'll just change the file name there. And then lastly, I'm going to change the quality from 100 down to 98, just to compress it and we're done. So that obviously took quite a bit longer than editing on my phone. Um, I think it's down to personal preference. I've never had uh, the quality come out drastically different between the two, but like I said before in my video for last week, it just means that if you edit on the phone, most of them are backlit. So you might find that when somebody views your item from either a tablet or more than likely from a PC or a laptop, it's going to look quite dark. Whereas if you are editing on the PC, you can just override that. But I'm going to now show you both of the pictures side by side so you can see the differences. They really are minimal. It's just something that I've got into doing myself. Um, you might find that you prefer the Snapseed edits that I showed in last week's video um, over the GIMP, but as it is a free software to use, I just think it gives you a little bit more flexibility than the Snapseed, and it's just what I do. So I hope you've enjoyed this video today. I am going to be adding in some more Etsy tips and tricks and tutorials as that was the feedback that I got from you all. If you've got any suggestions for new video content, then drop a comment down below. I'd love to know what you would like me to create. I'm always on the hunt for new ideas. If you haven't hit the like and subscribe button, then definitely do. It's a big help. I am at 278 subscribers, which is, wow, um, yeah. I. <laughs> I'm still in shock. Uh, I wasn't even at 100, I think, back in November. So a great big thank you to all of you that have hit that subscribe button. If you've got any Etsy friends that you think may like this video, then definitely share it. It all helps the algorithm. YouTube can see that I've got new people watching my content, which means that they will share it with others. So next week, I might actually slip in a little studio vlog because we haven't done one for a few months and I thought it would be nice for you all to see what I'm up to. Take care and I'll catch you all next time. Bye.